everyone. Welcome to round three of Live with a Professional. I am super, super excited. Um, this is my third time doing this and it has been successful so far. I am extremely excited for the guests that we have today and for my returning followers, welcome back. And for my new followers, hello. Um, thank you for tuning in. I'm Nia Harris. I'm a student athlete at Northwestern University and studying journalism um, in the Medill School of Journalism and as well as design. And I've created this live series in order to offer insight to professionals and successful people um, and see what their lives are all about and how they got there and any advice that they can give. Um, and so I decided to um, find people that I thought were inspiring in my life. And so my first live series was with, was with professional soccer player Marissa Vigiano. And then my second um, live was with, was with um, professional model Talia Richmond. And today I am interviewing Mackenzie Thomas. Mackenzie is a soprano singer for Mystere Cirque du Soleil. She's a Northwestern University alum and a former Alpha Phi member and me being in Alpha Phi as well. Today is Phi Friday um, and in honor of that, it's a day that we kind of celebrate our sisterhood. I decided to interview Mackenzie on our Phi Fridays. Um, so without further ado, if Mackenzie could join us, that would be amazing. Mackenzie, you just have to, we just have to wait for her to request and then I'll accept and then we'll get started. So let's just wait a few moments. And this, I'm, oh, there she is. You. Waiting and she's coming right now. She just requested. And we'll get started. I'm excited. Hi, Mackenzie. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm so glad I did this right. I'm not really. No, you did it. You did it great. Thank I'm so happy. <laughs> I see that you got a haircut and it looks great. Thanks. It's my awesome. quarantine do. You. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm super excited for today. Thank you so much for um, um, agreeing to do this with me. I'm really sure. excited to hear about your Broadway experiences as well as Cirque du Soleil, but we'll get there. Yes. Um, first off, my first question is, did you have any idea stepping at Northwestern that you'd be where you are today? Um... You know, I, I just hoped I'd be where I was today. And honestly, I had just huge, huge dreams. Like my whole life, I just had huge dreams. I wanted to do really big things. And I didn't really know what that meant, you know, growing up. I just knew I wanted to leave North Carolina. I wanted New York. I wanted the bright lights. I wanted the fast, crazy life. I wanted cool, weird, wacky, creative people around me. Mm -hmm. And... um yeah, I think I think going to Northwestern definitely introduced me to awesome people and opened a lot of doors for me and connected with me with the right people. And um, I mean, I'm not really one of these hippy dippy kind of people, but I really do believe that everything happens for a reason and that literally I wouldn't be here had I not done exactly what I did, the steps along right. the way. Did you always want to be a performer and a singer? Is it something you grew up with? Like, how did this all start? Well, I was in dance classes at, like, age three. So <laughs> I really enjoyed the stage. I loved providing entertainment and making people laugh and making them smile. It really, like, lifted me up to the theater and community theater, beauty pageants, voice lessons. I just started doing everything. It just kind of snowballed into more and more stuff and um you know i danced all my life but <laughs> it was actually during beauty pageants where i would dance or do like gymnastics i was not really a gymnast but um i would do like a cartwheel or something and um i, I started like getting first runner up in these beauty pageants and i was like well how am i gonna win what am i gonna do what do i need to do to win so i changed up my talent to singing and I started winning. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess I'm better at this than dance. <laughs> so singing just kind of became a little more natural to me and, um, and it kind of snowballed from there. Quick disclaimer to say that my audio um, broke for a portion of the live, so I'm just going to repeat what I said over a voice memo in order for you guys to hear the questions I asked and so you understand Mackenzie's answers. And then my audio will be fixed and we'll go back to normal and it kind of snowballed from there. What a crazy way to find out that singing was a talent of yours. Did you know that you could sing? How did it come well, about? How did you I know? Think, I think I sang around the house all the time and I definitely was a little entertainer. I was always making up songs and we have this silly video. I wish I had it because it's on VHS and 
we should have transferred it over to DVD, which now that doesn't even matter. But but it was this uh, video of me with my little brother, who's two years younger, and I was singing, I'm the peacock girl. I like to wear purple shoes. And I was like five. And I clearly just like messing around and putting on shows and, you know, it was just part of my personality. So it just naturally kind of all went together. And my dance studio actually, um, actually my dance teacher's on right now, Jeannie Corey, Jeannie Simmons was her name. Um, but <laughs> we actually, we did a production of Cats with a K. Remember that Jeannie? Cats with a K. And um, it was like full blown cats. Like we had the tire and everything. So we did do like musicals and we did the Nutcracker. So I don't know, it all just ties together. It all just connected. How awesome is it that you've been a performer since you were little? That's fantastic, and thank you for sharing. My next question is, did you always know you wanted to go to college and study music? Um, How did that all come about? I, it's weird. Like, I, I never thought not going to college was an option. And it's really interesting. It's interesting, though, because I don't really ever remember my parents really hammering it into me that I have to go to college. It was just like, that's what you do after high school. So I, I um, actually, my senior year of um, high school, I went to a boarding arts high school called Interlock and Arts Academy in Michigan. And it was after I spent a summer there in 2000, and I was just blown away by the talent. I was surrounded by ridiculous talent that just, I literally, it blew my mind. And um, I was like, I have to, I have to go here. I have to go to this school. I can't go back home to North Carolina. Like I had amazing opportunities in, in North Carolina. I had awesome teachers, awesome. I did awesome shows, great people, very talented people. Um, actually, one of my teachers just joined Torin Wright. He was my choir teacher and he also music directed all of our shows. Um, thanks for joining everybody. This is fun. But um, I just, I knew that I needed to go to another level. And at Interlochen, I was able to study music theory, and learn how to read music and learn things that really have helped me in my career and in my journey. So, um, and it was like college going there. It was like, seriously like college. Like I had two classes in the morning, music theory, followed by solfege class. Then I'd have an hour or two break. Then I'd go to choir. Then I'd have like science and math. And then I'd take, have two hours off and then I'd have rehearsals like it very much was like college and I lived in a dorm and it was like a lot of independence so that is what I don't even know I don't even remember what your <laughs> original question was my original question was guess, how did college come about did you always know you wanted to study music how did you oh yeah, yeah. So, so at Interlochen I was a voice major and and when it, it came time to apply for colleges I pretty much looked into all conservatories and I was gonna be an opera I was going to be an opera singer because I was really on that track because when you study classically, they kind of are like, no, don't sing musical theater. Belting is bad for your voice. <laughs> um, so I, I just, I really applied to conservatories and I mostly got into all of my schools and the one school that I applied to that was not a conservatory was Northwestern. And when I got into it, my sister Courtney, who I think is on or she was on, um, she was like, um, if you don't go to Northwestern, you are crazy. And so I was like, well, it must be good. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't know. I, I wasn't as aware of it as I should have been. And then, so I felt like honored to have been accepted into their program. And I was excited to not only just be a music major, but to have access to go to football games and do normal college things and so that excited me to have both and because had I gone to a conservatory wow it just would have really changed my whole course like who knows or or I, what I'd be I mean I don't really think I'd be an opera singer I don't think I have the discipline to practice 20 20,000 hours a day so um so it's really crazy how life works it's just nuts what an interesting and fabulous way to find out how you got to Northwestern. What was it like in the life as a music and opera major? What was your day in your life as a student at Northwestern? Well, you know, 
it was really interesting because I, the first year I studied with a woman named Mignon Dunn, who's like this super famous metropolitan opera star, or she was. So it was like a huge deal to get accepted into her vocal studio. And I, I was like, this is so hardcore. I can't believe I'm doing this because I auditioned to be in the musical theater program at school and I got into it and I was way more into musicals. I just was, that was what my experience, I mean, I don't know. I liked, I liked both, but I just wasn't really into performing in operas. I liked practicing it and doing it in vocal lessons. And it really gave me great, um, a great foundation. I mean, oh my God, that is very important. Oh, so what was, what was life like being a student at Northwestern, <clears throat> enjoying college and also being a music major? So um, my, I had tons of music classes, obviously. I had to take a lot of academic classes as well, science and math and English and history and normal um, subjects, which I loved. Well, I hate science and math. <laughs> But I liked that I was forced to do things other than just music because music came, you know, really naturally to me. And I do like challenges and I think it makes you uh, more well-rounded to have access to lots of different things. Um, I did go to football games, but not a lot. I was really in rehearsal a lot. I was totally in rehearsal all the time. So when I wasn't in school all day, I would be in the theater rehearsing. Um, and I also did a lot of out, you know, the cool thing about Northwestern is that it's located in uh, Evanston, which is right, a suburb of Chicago. And Chicago is a huge city that luckily lots of Broadway companies audition there. Um, but the cool thing about Chicago that gives it a little bit of a leg up on the New York scene is that it's kind of like, there's there's like crazy talent in Chicago, but it's nowhere near to as many people to sift through as in New York. So I feel like you have an opportunity to actually be seen better, especially if you're non-union and, and you don't have you're not a member of the Actors Equity Union, which is the union of theater actors. So when you're just starting out, it's super cool to pick a college that is in a city or somewhere where you can audition for professional local theater companies. Um, and so I was able to do that at Northwestern. So I would also do that. I worked at Chicago Ravinia Festival and I would audition for Marriott Lincolnshire Theater. I would audition for Chicago Shakespeare Theater, all the really great equity companies. And that was really cool to have access to those awesome directors and to really, I was like known by them and I was still a student. So that's a big, that's a big plus, you know, it's all about your connections. It's all about who you know, really, in every business, but definitely in this business. So that was my life in Northwestern. I was a member of Alpha Phi, um, <laughs> and I loved AP. I loved the girls. I thought they were really cool and down to earth. Um, they were so down to earth and just really just grounded, well-rounded, cool chicks. Um, so I loved being a member of that sorority and I went to a few events, but not a ton. Like I was, I didn't, I never lived in the house because I really had no time. I had no time for it. I was constantly in the theater. So, um, that was kind of my life at Northwestern. Yeah. At this point in the live, I finally fixed my audio. So the rest of this video will be just me and Mackenzie talking regularly. Enjoy. Okay. It works. Okay. Perfect. So Yay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm happy you don't have to repeat my questions because I'm sure that's a lot to think about. Um, okay, so let's jump right back in. We were talking a little bit about um, kind of your life before college, how you got into music, and then you went to boarding school in Michigan that kind of got you into the arts and things like that, and that was fantastic. And yeah. then you were talking about life at Northwestern and being able to do music as well as other things and that you were an AP. We had some AP girls in here and they were excited. Oh, yay. You're That's cool. me, so it's really fun. Um, I guess my, my next question is, uh, I was told you went on Broadway for Mamma Mia. How did you get that opportunity? What was it like? Tell us as much as you can about it. Okay, so um, actually it was my senior year of college and it was fall. And I skipped school. I, I don't, I never really skipped school. I was like a good, I was like really good. And so <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I skipped school and I went to Chicago downtown and I was non-union, so non-equity, not in the union. So I had to put my name on a non-union list and I was like number 25. I got there really early though. The audition was like at 10 and I got there at like six. I don't know. Something wow. ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It was like black outside, but I knew it was going to be intense and that I probably wasn't going to be seen maybe. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes they don't see non-union people. They see all the union people first. So I put my name on a list and I remember we had scribbled it out in pencil, just some lists that we had circulating around us. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned um, for the entire team. It was like the whole team, including Brits were like from London. They were on the team there. It was crazy. It was and that like never happens. That's so mm -hmm. rare that you have the director, the producers, the writers. It was like mm -hmm. crazy because the, the show had been open for a while. So it wasn't like brand new. So it was crazy. Um, and I walked in. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. So I, <laughs> Olivia's going to laugh. My best friend who I met in, in the Broadway company is on right now. And she's totally going to like make fun of me for this, but whatever. Anyway, I, I decided to wear a short mini skirt. <laughs> like boots over my knees like hooker boots like a tight top I, you know I was 20 I was 20 21 and I was like my hair was all bland and whatever and I walked in and I sang my song which is the song that I booked like everything with which is where the boys are which is the most overdone song ever and I also sang let's hear it for the boy because at the time I had just played Rusty and Footloose in college. And then I also sang There Are Worse Things I Could Do from Greece, which is so, at the time, that was not my type. And it was weird that I sang that song. <laughs> but they kept asking for more songs. And I, and I really thought they'd ask me for 16 bars. Because normally in an audition like that, you get 16 bars and that's it. 16 bars mm -hmm. of music. 16 measures of music, in case anybody doesn't know what that means. So that's basically like 30 seconds. And so I walked in dressed like that, and this British guy, worst <laughs> accent ever about to happen, was like, so have you seen our show? And I was like, oh, yeah. And I totally hadn't. I had no idea what it was about, actually. Um, and at the time, we didn't have access to all of the stuff. Now you can prepare so yeah. well for auditions. There's videos everywhere. It's in our show. And I was like, oh, yeah. And he was like, so can you come back tomorrow, but with your head pulled back and no makeup and flat shoes and jeans and just plain 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 mm -hmm. simple and so I went home and did a little more research and I found out like oh the girls I'm auditioning for are like on a Greek island wearing flowy long dresses and yeah. <laughs> hippie, hippie long dresses with like Birkenstocks and so I went back the next day and the whole team started clapping like when I walked in Wow, which that's also never happens. This stuff yeah. doesn't happen. It's weird. And they were like, "Thank you, thank you, great. This is exactly what we're what we want." And and so <laughs> they just went really well. But you know, I was like twenty twenty one, so I was like, yeah. "Ah, not, nothing's gonna happen. Come on, it's Broadway." You know, like whatever. Yeah. And then literally two months later, on December twenty third, two thousand and four, I was at home in North Carolina on Christmas break, and I got the phone. I got the the call from a two one two number, and everyone who's who's ever worked in New York knows the feeling of seeing a two one two number <laughs> on your that's on your phone. It's like, oh my God, Broadway's calling! Broadway's calling! And so literally, I was like, Broadway's calling! And sure <laughs> enough. It was the casting team in New York saying, mm -hmm. we want you to um, join Mamma Mia. Actually, we are thinking that we want you to join the national tour cast, the Broadway tour. So I'm a senior in college. I'm freaking out. I, the, the buzz and the adrenaline and the feeling right. you get when you get a call like this is outrageous. And this is why people do this crazy business because it, mm -hmm. it's just like, I can't describe the feeling. I can't describe the feeling. It's the best feeling in the world. And yeah. I was like, yes! I just felt like I made it. I made it. This is happening. And so I went back to Northwestern. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I went back to Northwestern in January, right after break. And I went to all my teachers and I said, look, here's the deal. I got offered a Broadway <laughs> contract to go on the road with Mama mm -hmm. Mia. I'm going to take this. There's nothing anybody can say to stop me. And how do I finish my degree? 
And they said, right. all right. So I had to finish my degree on the road. And that was crazy because it was ridiculous. I, I like had, I got to make up classes. They kind of let me make up what, what my classes were in order to earn. Yeah. I actually had to change my degree from vocal performance, which was an, an operatic major to, to what I made up. And it's literally on my diploma, vocal and theatrical studies. That's awesome. <laughs> which actually was more appropriate for what I was doing anyway. And yeah. I got out of doing my senior vocal recital. I was able to do the, you know, just my classes from afar while on tour. And then I um, didn't get to walk with my class, but I didn't really care. I was like, oh, I'm already doing what I wanted to do. This is, the only, yeah. this is what I wanted to do. So um, I, I finished, it was like a temporary contract, like eight months. And then I went to New York and New York is like the hub for musical theater. That's like where you go, unless you stay in right. Chicago. Um, and so I went to New York and a few months later, they called me for a temporary short, short, I don't even remember how long it was, like two months for mm -hmm. Broadway. So that's how I made my Broadway debut. It wasn't even like that's how amazing. you think it would happen or it was nice. really because I did the tour first and then I, I had access to the team and they knew me and then they knew I worked hard and I was reliable and, and I fit the costumes really because <laughs> of that. And I, and I was transferred to the Broadway or went to the Broadway company for a short bit. And then literally that closed two, three months. And after that, I went right back out onto the road again. Wow. So, um, and then I kept touring with Mamma Mia. So really weird, really weird. That's <laughs> fun, exciting experience. What a win-win for you. The fact that you got to finish your senior year while being on Broadway and doing like kind of a dream for yeah. someone like you. That's it fantastic. It was crazy. It was crazy. Kind of, but yeah, but you know what, like, and this is what I want to, I want to really hone in on this with anybody who's a student or who's pursuing a degree in this or who really wants to be on Broadway and you're young and you're just starting out or you want to do this. Like, the weird thing about my journey is that it's like, I felt like I hit my peak early. Like, I made, I made it to Broadway okay, really it. early. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, oh, well, I mean... I made it, so clearly I'm just so gonna go that? Broadway to Broadway to Broadway to Broadway to Broadway, right? Yeah. And that's not how it works, you know? It's like, maybe you will, but maybe you won't. I mean, you just never know yeah. with this business. And and then, you know, you really do a lot of regional theater in my, my line of work, in musical theater or in theater. You really do tons mm -hmm. of regional theater. You work at theaters all across America. Um, that's really the majority of your work for the most part. Some people right. are lucky to just do Broadway, Broadway show, Broadway show, Broadway show, but 99.99% of the people I know do other things. Like you're kind of doing all kinds of things. Like my best friend, Olivia, she's on here, Olivia Ogama, and she does, you know, <laughs> commercials, plays, musicals. She makes reels. That's like her side gig is making reels for what? mega, mega celebrities. Like it's just this, business is wacky like yeah. <laughs> it's crazy no yeah then, <laughs> yeah so anyway that's longest longest uh no you're that's so good that was super but... exciting to hear and I mean one of my questions is going to be like I've heard it's so tough to book a job and get a steady income and how, what do you guys do for, in order to like have you've had such a successful career so what have you done in order for that to happen like what are the specific tips or anything well um okay actually I wrote some down so I wouldn't forget um, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm such a Northwestern nerd. <laughs> okay, let me go up. Okay, so the biggest thing I can say is to keep showing up. I know it sounds stupid, but literally, if you keep showing up, something will stick eventually. Mm -hmm. the, the hardest part about this business is the first year you're going to see your colleagues people that were awesome in college with you people that were superstars they were mega mega awesome mm -hmm. you're going to see them drop out within like six months to a year crazy. and it will be so crazy for you to see that happening you're, you're going to be like wait we were hardcore guys we were like in it we were yeah. in it to win it what do you mean you're dropping out what do you mean you're going to go be a banker or or literally a girl I knew uh, who, who was like one of the most talented performers at school is, an, is, an, is a doctor now. She, she went to go yeah. get her, you know, and, 
And at first you're just shocked. You're like, wait a second, we were so hardcore. Why are you dropping out? And that mm -hmm. will be discouraging for you because it's kind of like your family. Like you all go to New York together and then it, everybody's dropping out like flies. And so I was right. one, of, I felt like I was one of the only ones to really just stick with it. But there are so many hills and that like mountains and valleys i mean i've had some really off years like years where it was dead nothing nothing yeah. and where i completely changed my whole path where i was like oh i'm gonna go sell mercedes-benz cars legit for a year and a half or i'm gonna go sell mm -hmm. benchmarking research i'm gonna go do this or that and i held crazy side jobs i had like five jobs at a time when i was auditioning in new york mm -hmm. Yes. I worked at the Kabbalah Center as a receptionist. I was an actor, coach, and saleswoman. I worked at a fashion marketing PR firm. I worked at a wine store. I mean, I was an Upper East Side, like, mother's helper nanny type person. I, just, I, did, yeah. I did everything. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't change one second of it because it, mm -hmm. it just made me more, more well-rounded. It exposed me to all kinds of different journeys and workspaces and it really I think it made me a better actor and it made me a better person just to be mm -hmm. ex exposed to that you know and, and hustling like that and and doing the grind so that's yeah. number one keep showing up okay. um okay this is important number two if something's not working change it up ask people what they think your type is update your material change your look so the biggest thing that you'll see in this industry is somebody that comes out of a college. Let's say you're the ingenue. I was an ingenue. I was the Eliza Doolittle type or Dorothy <laughs> and Wizard of Oz or you know what I mean? Like I was the, yeah. the, the young girl type. Well, you know, college preps you to be the type you are then and there. Right. What happens in five, 10 years when you're, you're, you're a little wrinkly and you're not quite so ingenue? Like you gotta, you've gotta be honest with yourself because there's gonna be some young whippersnappers that come in and they're 20, 21, fresh out of college. And they're gonna be the ones that the casting directors are looking to cast for ingenue now. And now you're graduating to a mother role or, mm -hmm. or a different type. And then you have to ask yourself, do I, do I wanna do this? Do, do, do I like this Am, or have I changed or, you know, and some people mm -hmm. are like, right. I was cool doing the ingenue stuff. I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. And you, and mm -hmm. you end up, you know, going on and on and on um, and doing other things with your life. But um, I, I think it's super important to be honest with yourself and to really ask people to give you constructive criticism, ask your agent, ask your friends, ask, ask anyone like, what, what do you see me as? What's my type? And you might really want to be the leading whatever, but maybe you're a character role. You're the, you're the best friend. You're the character role. You have to be honest with yourself. And um, I don't know. That's, that's a big one, I think. Um, and awesome. and uh, another tip I would say is really, really surround yourself with positive people and people that believe in you and people that lift you up. Because I see mm -hmm. a lot of performers come from homes where – they, their parents either don't support them whatsoever or they're well-meaning people. What They're very well-meaning people, but they don't get, get it. They don't get this business. So they're not very encouraging and they don't know how to be encouraging. It's like, find your tribe, find people that lift you up and that believe in you and that cheer you on. Like that's so important because New York, man, New York can beat you down. New York can make you feel like you're the least talented person on the planet. <laughs> so it's so important to surround yourself with great people um i keep going i'm gonna have so many tips girl I no those are so good like, <laughs> no those are so good that's awesome i mean what was interesting you said that like you had dead periods where you weren't you weren't booking anything how did you get yourself back up out of those dead periods like what made you motivated to want to keep acting it's super well it's almost like i would just I would just take breaks in a way like mm -hmm. I would either change my life completely. Like in 2010, I, I was down to the final two for wicked on Broadway. And also wow. the Patty, uh, the Patty Lapone gypsy production that was going up. And those were two mega, mega, mega mm -hmm. Broadway shows. And within like two or three weeks, I was up for this and I was beat out by like one person only. I was so close. And it, it just, that kind of, like, getting so close and then 
like being torn yeah. apart like that you have to be so tough to deal with that kind of rejection oh yeah and my best friend olivia just said tell them about the tarzan tour so i got cast in the broadway tour olivia has a great she actually will remember better than me because my memory sucks she remembers everything even about my life so <laughs> olivia so i got cast in the broadway production tour mm -hmm. and it was supposed to start at, at like atlanta in atlanta at the theater down there and then right. something happened where the theater went bankrupt it was the wow. national yeah it was the national tour of tarzan and the theater went bankrupt or something and then we mm -hmm. couldn't like start the tour and so that was like crazy it was like, I cannot no. believe, I cannot believe this happened. So that happened. And then the two Wicked and Gypsy thing happened. And I was like, wow. I can't do this anymore. I can't do it. I can't do this. I'm not going to put myself through this anymore. This is ridiculous. I can't handle this. So I sublet in my apartment. I was in Washington Heights, New York City. Mm -hmm. And I moved back to North Carolina, like Raleigh area. And I, I started selling Mercedes Benz. I wanted to, I wanted to do sales. I, I was told I would be good in sales. So I mm -hmm. decided to work at Mercedes Benz and I, um, I sold cars for a year and a half and I really enjoyed the job, but I wasn't like amazing at it. It's actually yeah. a lot harder than me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I would kill it, but other times not really. And then, um, I, I then, um, sold benchmarking material to pharmaceutical companies. That was super hardcore. My friend Bridget got me involved with that. And I was just like, wow. I was sitting at my desk and I started having panic attacks, legit. I started having panic attacks. And I've never experienced that before ever. And I, and I had to, and I, oh, and I went to, to see a therapist and I'd never seen a therapist before in my life. And I had a session with her and I was like, I don't know what's wrong. I'm just so <laughs> miserable. And she was like, well, aren't you, you're a performer, right? And I, and I was like, well, I used to be. And she's like, well, why? And she go back. You, why are you here? And I was like, it's just too hard. And she's like, but that's, it sounds like that's what you do. Like, that's yeah. you. And I, that was kind of like the kick in my ass. I think I was just, I hated Broadway. I just didn't, it hurt me. And I didn't, I didn't want to be in it anymore. But I realized I was totally in the wrong business. I was not meant to sit in a cubicle that is just not the life for me. And so yeah. I moved back to New York with my future husband in tow. I met him in North Carolina. We moved back to New York. Mm -hmm. And I tried to kind of get back into it. But before I really could, I booked a um, Disney on Classic, one of the right. Japan tours I told you about. Yeah. And, um, and then my husband got a job in California, or my future husband. So we moved to California. And then I went off to Japan and then I started doing concert tours and things like that. So we tell us about Japan. That sounds amazing. Especially since you said that my, that was like one of your favorite places to go. Tell us like, what is Disney on classic? So Disney on classic, um, actually is a, a show actually directed by a guy I did Mamma Mia tour with Tony Clements. He was oh, wow. our lead guy on Mamma Mia and mm -hmm. he somehow, I think he was a performer on Disney on classic years ago. Um, but he ended up uh, basically becoming director mm -hmm. after a few years. And that there you go. There's that thing again, the contacts, like knowing right. people. Working. And so I was, I was like selling benchmarking material, surfing playbill.com, which is a popular actor website where you go to audition, yeah. et cetera. And I saw this breakdown seeking um, performers for Disney on Classic, which is a concert tour of Japan with the Tokyo Philharmonic Orchestra singing Disney music where women, the women dress up in ball gowns, princess ball gowns kind of, the guys wear tuxes, we sing Disney music while they play on a big projection screen behind us, they play still shots from the Disney show. Um, wow. I was like, um, this is exactly what I was meant to do. Through Broadway, <laughs> this is what I'm meant to do. I'm yeah. meant to just stand there and sing songs. Sing. This is what I want to do. And look pretty. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was like, this is what I want to do. So I contacted Tony and I said, hey, Tony, it's been a while. I'm kind of out of the business, but I really feel like this is my jam. Mm -hmm. I really want to audition for this. So he said, absolutely, come on up. And I sang Little Mermaid material and I, I booked it. Wow. And I ended up going to Japan for the first time. And Japan, I'm telling you guys, if you've never been, is awesome. 
awesome, awesome. And if you go there as a performer, you are legitimately treated like a celebrity. They are Crazy. so kind to you and they treat you so well. So we flew over to our base was kind of Tokyo, but we performed all over Japan, um, everywhere. I mean, I went mm -hmm. to like 40 something cities. That's amazing. And um, it was, it was awesome. Like, that was cool. And I did that tour maybe three different times, like two big fall tours and then one short spring tour after I had Oliver, my son, who's five. Mm -hmm. um, when he was six months old, I went and did a spring tour. And that was a really tough decision because I was like, oh, my God, he's only six he's months old. He's a baby. And but I, I my soul was literally dying for to do something. I, I needed to sing. I needed to perform. I had to get back out there. And it was a tough decision to leave him. And I left him for a month and he stayed with his Grammy in Rhode Island. And um, mm -hmm. I left for a month, did the gig, came back for 10 days or something and went mm -hmm. back for a week. And then that was it. So wow. I was able to justify it. Like it was a month is a long time. But I was like, well, it's nothing compared to like, several months of a tour you know, just, <laughs> it's true. You know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I was like I need to do this for my sanity for my mm -hmm. for my mental health just to be out there again and, and to prove to myself that I can still be a performer and a mom and that was right. a huge identity shift for me to become a mom while being a performer mm -hmm. it was a major identity shift and I still sometimes even struggle with it today like mm -hmm. it's it's hard when it, it's like I got married when I was 30 had a had Oliver when I was 31 and you know having kids and all that wasn't really on my radar like it wasn't a thing for me I just wanted to perform and and like do theater I I really didn't really it wasn't like I have to get married and I want to have babies lots of babies like I was never ever that kind of person so once I had Oliver I realized it's gonna be tough it's gonna be really tough to pursue this and, and it has been it's I've, there's been m many opportunities where I was approached to do some, even another Disney classic gig. And I had to, I just, I had to decline it because I, sometimes I feel, I, you know, it's the mom thing. I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, I've done it. Yeah. I've done it a few times. And right now I just think the best thing is to just be here for my son, you know, yeah, which is amazing that you were able it's to. It's hard. Know. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you love your son and so he'll really enjoy the fact that you're around. So that's, Fantastic. Yeah. And the fact, actually, let's jump to present time. You're yeah. working for Cirque du Soleil with Mystere. And how is that like? like? Tell us everything about that. How did you get there? What's it like? So um, in 2000, this is crazy. So in 2010, when I was working at Mercedes, I sent in a, a half ass. sorry, I don't know if I'm supposed to cuss. I sent <laughs> in a little application to Cirque, and I was, I barely... I just didn't even try. I was just kind of sending something, but they still replied and they were like, Oh, we want you to put material on tape. Can you do this? And I never did it. <gasps> what? I don't know. What I, was, <laughs> I, I wasn't in the right mindset though. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I was just, I was still in this, like, I don't, I'm now, I'm not a performer. I'm doing other things now. I just wasn't ready. <laughs> right. During that one period of time. Exactly. <laughs> in denial. Yeah. Exactly. So I, so fast forward to 2014, I'm pregnant with Oliver mm -hmm. and wow. I um, had just gotten done doing a production of Steel Magnolias in my hometown. And I was pregnant playing the role of Shelby, which is hilarious because like she says, mama, I'm pregnant. And I was really pregnant. And it was the first time I was saying I was pregnant to my family and they had no idea. So that was crazy. <laughs> wow. <That's crazy. laughs> So that was really cool. I thought my acting was really good on that because I was being legit. I was really being honest. I was really pregnant. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so anyway, right after that, I was like, I want to sing for Cirque du Soleil. Like that has been a dream of mine for years and years. That's really been tugging at me forever. And I just have been... I just stuck on this musical theater track because that's what I was trained to do at college. Like mm -hmm. musical theater and musical theater. And, and I just didn't open my mind enough. And that's another tip. Open your mind. Open your mind to other opportunities. You never know where it'll lead. And it might lead to something way more exciting than what you sure. think you want to do. Mm -hmm. So I applied, sent in some songs. Like, I think I sang, it, I sang Defying Gravity from Wicked, belted my face off, and I also oh. sent in some soprano, high soprano things to show both sides. 
And um, within like 24 hours, the casting team contacted me and said, can you put certain material on tape? So I put on tape um, material from the shows I wanted to be in. So mm -hmm. Mystere, O, Ka, anything that I thought I'd be good at and that is in like in Vegas, a place where we could be stationary and not touring the world. I, I concentrated my material on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I um, did that, put it on tape. And, and within like a couple days of submitting it, they told me I was admitted into the database, which meant I'm circ approved and that yeah. I passed the test. And it's just a matter of finding a position for me. Well, I was like, well, <laughs> Well, I mean, how many people are in the database? Like, I'm like yeah. one of five billion people. And I'm like, just, just little wow, brunette. Yeah, I mean, not, like, I was just like, how am I going to stand out? How do I make yeah. this? How do I stand out to these people? Like, how long am I going to be on this list? So I noticed they were auditioning in um, Las Vegas a few months from that date. And we were at the time living in Long Beach, California. We had moved because my husband's job to, was in Cypress, California. So we moved to Long Beach. I said, hey, Peter, can we drive to, uh, or not can we, let's drive to Vegas. <laughs> and, and I'm auditioning for this. And so I, I, I wrote to the casting team and I said, I know I'm already in your da database and I know you, you approved of me, but I want to mm -hmm. sing for you in person. I really want to meet you in person. My and I want, you to, I want you to see me in person and get to know me. They said, okay. And I said, yes. And so I prepared like 10 songs from Mystere, wow. um, O, and Zarkana, which were the three shows I wanted to be in. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to be in, those three shows. And I also prepared a German piece to show that I could sing in other languages. And wow. of course, that's, that's, that's where my operatic training comes in, because I, I knew Italian, German, and French. So I, so I had cool. so much in, in my wheelhouse that really, yeah, and Cirque, it, I don't know if you've ever seen a Cirque show, but it's a made-up language. Like I did not know that. Wow. Yeah. It's the perfect wow. show for me because I suck at lyrics, and I forget lyrics all the time. And, it's, and if you forget things, you can just make it up on the spot. It's amazing. So wow. Perfect. It was, like, made for you. <laughs> it really was. I'm telling you. It's, like, amazing. Yeah. So anyway, I... I ended up going in person and I felt like I nailed the audition. I was super prepared. And I can't say that about a ton of auditions that I've done in my life. Like, mm -hmm. you know, in New York, when I was going on three, four auditions a week, you go in kind of half-assing sometimes. Sometimes you're not mm -hmm. very prepared because you get the, the lyrics the day before or the, you wow. know, the sides the day before. So, so I, I nailed it because I was prepared. I was prepared. I knew what I was doing and I was ready. So, not even like six, well, oh, at the end of the audition, they said, you were very well prepared. Great job. Um, you really were really good on that Zarkana material. Did Brie help you? So the singer, one of the singers in Zarkana at the time was my friend Brie from college, who was a year younger than me, but she had kind of made her whole career off of Cirque pretty much ever since she graduated from Northwestern. So she did O for four years, Zarkana for three and a half years, had a year off and did some stuff for them overseas. And then now is on Mystere. So she was in Zarkana and I had contacted her and I said, I need to see your show. So before my audition, I saw Zarkana. I got exact, I saw what they wanted. I saw the vibe, the energy coming out of her. And I was like, yes. all right, I know, I know what they want. I know what they mm -hmm. want. And so I kind of crafted my audition based off of watching her performance. And um, oh, that's why I was so prepared because I, I, I was able to see it. And that's another mm -hmm. tip for you, little whippersnappers. <laughs> try to see the show you're auditioning for, or try to um, see video footage of, of people doing it. I'm not saying copy somebody, but you'll learn a lot about the style and the vibe and like what they're, what they're, how they're directing it. So that's very important. Um, so anyway, six months later, oh, oh, sorry, ah, I keep skipping. At the, <laughs> end of that, at the end of that audition, the casting director said, okay, well, that was really great. You were very well prepared. I said, well, well, what, I mean, I can't believe I asked this because you never usually ask this in an audition to casting people. But I was like, how, what, how does this work? I mean, when, if I were right for something, when can I get a call? She was like, it could be three days. It could be three years. Wow. And I was like, <laughs> three years? No, no, no. <laughs> um, 
and I was really lucky. Six months later, I was like my friend Bree was now in Zarkana, Northwestern, mm -hmm. and she kind of said, "Heads up, I, I, we have a the other singers on needs to go out on inter injury. We might need somebody." And so I contacted casting, and I said, "Hi, I'm available. I heard something was going on." You know, I kind of just yeah. like you did put it. yourself in there. Yeah. And sure enough, she or no, 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 this is what happened. I was crafting that email. I was crafting that saying, Hey, I'm available because Brie kind of told me. Yeah. But then before I had a chance to hit send, I had this Canadian number from Montreal call me. What? Yes. Okay. That's what happened. And that yes. was like I that sent that energy that I was talking about earlier, that energy, it sent it right through my body again. I was like, this is my gig. This is my gig. I've wow. got to just, whoosh, you know. So sure enough, she said, can you join us? The deal with this is that you're going to have to sing in harness upside down. Have you ever sung in a harness? And I said, I was Peter Pan before in community, <laughs> theater, in community theater back in North Carolina. And um, she said, okay, great. Well, we want to fly you to Montreal where you're going to, trained for three weeks and they gave me like height tests. I had to walk. They took me to like the eighth story above the gymnasium and they made me walk out on this wire net, which is like the, the wires were as thin as like, wow. as like floss. And they made me walk out onto this wire net, floss wire net <laughs> to prove that I wasn't scared of heights or something. Wow. I mean, that's oh smart. Wow. I was dying. I was sweating. I was, my heart, I was, I was shaking, but I didn't show it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's totally fine. No big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I faked it. I faked it. And mm -hmm. I walked out onto the net. I was like, yeah, this is great. This is no problem. They were like, you're not scared? And I was like, oh, it's, it's great. I can get used to this. It's fine. I look for this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got out the net, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> And so I learned the whole show. I learned how to spin around, get upside down. I learned, oh, don't eat big meals before you're spinning around upside down. I had to work yeah. out and train and get my body ready. My son was 10 months, so I, I was, I needed to like shape up. I wasn't really out of shape, but I just needed to like tighten up a little bit and feel good yeah. and be healthy and get my exercise down, get my food mm -hmm. right. And um, so I joined Zarkana and that was my first Cirque show. And so because of that connection, after Zarkana closed in April, 2016, um, we moved back to New York City for that whole year. I can't believe that happened. It feels like a little blurp. And I was super down that whole year. The auditions weren't going well. It wasn't my mm -hmm. scene. It just wasn't right. I, I'm not on Genoo. They weren't really casting my type. And for those that don't know what type is, it's like you're, you're a leading lady. You're on Genoo. You're a character actor. You know, what type are you? And my type just wasn't being cast. Like, I wasn't getting auditions. It, mm -hmm. I, I think it was a, a bunch of things. Like if they were casting my type, I was not being called in either. I wasn't, I wasn't getting auditions. Yeah. It, it was just like, I don't even know what was going on. I was like, I just feel like this is not my time. And yeah. I, I needed to change something. And so I started writing music and I was like into writing country music. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, and, and I still love writing music. I was into it. I was totally into it, but just, before I got, I went to Nashville to try to, to try to check out the scene, like, oh, maybe this is my scene. And I came back and then I went to my friend Olivia, who I keep talking about, but I went to her, she's an actress, and I went to her um, after show in Times Square and we were at this party and we were talking to a group of people and Olivia was like, ah, oh, here's my friend Mac. She was in Cirque du Soleil, blah, blah, blah. And she was talking. And I was like, I just, that's all I want to do. I just want to sing for Cirque. That's, I don't want to do Broadway. I don't want to do this. Like, I just want to sing for Cirque again. I just wish there was a, a role for me in, in a show, you know? Because with Cirque, yeah. it's like, oh, she says opening night party, not closing night. Sorry. It's opening night party <laughs> of her show. And I was telling a group of people, I just want to work, sing for Cirque again. Mm -hmm. I literally go home. It's late. Had a couple cocktails there. Went home checked my email and I had an email from casting saying, hi, we really need a wow. on-call singer from Astaire to cover both the soprano and mezzo role. The thing is that you need to be um, local. And I said, consider me local. I am there. 
<laughs> I'm moving to Vegas. I'm not, just don't even think, don't even, don't even, I'm not in New York. I'm not in New York. I'm in Vegas. I'm in Vegas. If they knew I was in New York, but I was just like, I'm there. Don't even worry about that. Don't let that be a factor in casting me. So they said, all right, here's the music. I contacted Brie, who is now in Miss Stare, and she was able to give me some helpful tips. Mm -hmm. There's the, the connection thing again, just having yeah. somebody to kind of guide you and, and give you the insider scoop. And then I flew to Vegas, had to do the audition with the band on stage. I was shaking like a leaf. I was just like a nervous wreck. And in this type of gig, you use in-ear monitors. So you, are, you have to plug your ears completely, which as a singer is the hardest thing ever to get used to. Yeah. And so your ears are plugged completely. You're listening to the click that keeps the tempo. You're listening wow. to the live music and you're listening to the band director talk to you while all this is going on and saying, all right, I need improv here. All right, Bruce on guitar, I need you to like play wow, something here. This mm -hmm. is happening while you're performing. So we did this during the audition and I was like, oh my God. And it was just like a rush, crazy. I was shaking, it was crazy, I was nervous. Um, but I was very well prepared. And so I, I felt really good about it. But I also know it's a crapshoot. Like, you just never know. You never know. Yeah. Like, maybe, the, maybe, the, maybe they'll say, oh, we don't like the way she looks. We want a different look. You know, we want a taller person. We want a blonde. We want this. We want that. You know, I don't know. Yeah. So I was lucky that I got it. And so I moved, we, I moved first to start training here and to get integrated into the show. We got a little apartment. Um, and then Peter and Oliver followed me shortly. And then... Within six months, I think we bought our house that we're in right now. And I've been in Mystere two years now, but we're down due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, yes. oh. And so my role um, changed from on call to eventually I took over the soprano track after the girls' contract uh, ran out. So mm -hmm. I ended up taking over that role. And so now I'm full time soprano. And then my friend Brie is the mezzo, but um, that's kind of it. We're, we're on a we have a pandemic going on right now. So they yeah, close the definitely. shows, they close everything in Las Vegas, the casinos, the shows, the concerts, everything. Crazy. So we're all, we're all <laughs> yeah, doing the same time, thing that you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. Wow, that's crazy. What a success story for you. I mean, you had your ups and your downs, but yet you still, you ended up where you want to be and you're happy and you're local and you're stable and that's what you wanted. And it's like, yeah, it's, it's, to happen. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, this role is perfect for me, not only because it's like singing gibberish and it's opera, it's belting, it's theatrical. Um, it's and, and yes, I get to sing in the same place every night, make a great paycheck that provide and help help provide for my family, like be here for my son, come home every night. I'm not touring. Mm -hmm. It's really a blessing. Like it's really yeah. a blessing. I'm really, really lucky. I'm thankful every day that I have this gig and I love my cast. We are like a family and I miss them so much. <laughs> I miss them so much, but um, I am very thankful for this, but I really feel like I had to go through the really bad times in this business mm -hmm. to get to this point to be super, super, super grateful. I feel like mm -hmm. you kind of have to go through some rough spots to really really no gratitude right um I don't think always but but for me I did I I really needed to not have things handed to me and I needed to know what it was like to have to work my ass off to get something and and I worked really hard to get here so I'm very thankful that's fantastic and actually we're kind of getting around the time for any viewers to ask questions so okay. if any of you guys have a question just type it in and um we'll pick them and choose them she can go and answer them and while we wait for that i actually have some more questions for you um what's it like to perform in front of a hundred people like it's something obviously you've been used to but is it like what's it like um well the biggest audience I've ever performed for was national TV, but um, the biggest live audience I've ever performed for was like 50,000 people. And that wow. was um, in a short term guest contract that I had to, uh, I was a guest artist for a Christmas show at Universal Studios Japan. There was, there was a weird thing going on with me in Japan there mm. for a couple of years. It was like Disneyland Classic one year, Disneyland Classic the next year, 
Universal Studios the next year, Disneyland Classic the next year. It was like four years in a row. I, I went to Japan. It was crazy. I was like, I think I'm meant to live in Japan. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, so, oh, wait, there's a couple questions. Yeah, someone asked, um, I'll just read it out. Like, it seems like okay. this year you're singing more to the performer than to the audience in a way. Is this different than other types of performances you've given? Yes. So, so here you're singing more to the performers. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. So our role in Mystere is basically, according to my director, we're kind of like the, 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 the queens of the land. That's kind mm -hmm. of what he told me when he was integrating me. It's been 25, this show has been around for 26 years. So it's, it's gone through a couple transformations, actually a lot of transformations, mm -hmm. but they've always had two singers, but, um, we're supposed to be like the ladies of the land. So coming from a theatrical background, it's just not my style to stand there and sing. So I, in my head, he gave us a lot of creative, or me when I was integrating a lot of creative freedom, I feel. I feel like he just told me my blocking. He said, go here, go here, go here, go here. And mm -hmm. so I felt like as an artist, I needed to make a story in my head and figure out what is my relationship to, to this. And so with that whole, you're the queens of the land, I was like, oh, well, you're my people. Oh, I'm impressed by you over there. Oh, I'm yeah. shocked by you. You know, I had to create stories and relationships with all of these things around me or else it would be really lame. And I would just stand there and and just like sing and not have any personality and, mm -hmm. and wouldn't really contribute to the story. Um, so that is the thing with singing to the performers. Um, and is this different from other types of performances? Um, it really depends. Like, I mean, sometimes you park and bark, we call it, where you just stand there and sing. Like you're, you have a microphone and you just stand there and sing. Like Disneyland Classic is ish like that, but you still have to find relationships with the people you're on stage with. Otherwise it's super awkward. So for the most part, I'm connecting with people on stage, especially in a musical, you have relationships with, with whoever's around you. Um, and your voice, and teacher, voice teacher in you. This so is actually in a, um, she's an AC. It's Maddie Novak. She's a friend of mine. So okay. I'm excited. She asked a question. <laughs> so I started off with Mignon Dunn. Um, and then she left. And then I was with um, Bill Woodruff, who was awesome. And he was a colleague of Mignon Dunn. And I went and studied at um, the International Institute of Vocal Arts in uh, Italy with him and Mignon. And then after he left, I had three different voice teachers when I was at Northwestern because they kept like leaving or drama, not drama with me, but drama within, with them and their <laughs> department. <laughs> and so my, my last teacher was Terry Brancaccio, who's awesome. And I learned awesome. a lot through her. Amazing. Um, a question I have for you are, what are your next steps in your career? Are you gonna be staying at CERC? Do you have any goals or any exciting upcoming projects? So, <laughs> well, right now with this pandemic, I'm not really sure <laughs> what's happening. Yeah. We are praying that we are going to go up soon-ish, but we also are hoping everyone's super safe about it and that we're going to have measures in place to make this, like, responsible. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do, we're not a part of the MGM network. Treasure Island is its own thing. So, but I imagine, I mean, I'm not sure, but I imagine we'll kind of, check out what M the MGM properties plan on doing and, and kind of plan accordingly. I'm not really sure. So once they mm -hmm. go up, I, I imagine the hotel will go up first and we'll see the crowds or if, or how many people are even coming to the hotels and then we'll figure out when we're going to go up. But um, I, I love my job. I love my job. I'm, I really, I feel like I've worked for years to get a, a steady gig like this. Mm -hmm. And um. I'm very happy being being here. So I'm, I, I plan on staying at Miss Stair as long as I want to, but I also love taking individual projects and I love um, teaching. I like doing master classes a lot. I love working with students and, and things like that. And so during this pandemic, a lot of stuff is starting to happen where like yesterday I was in a recording studio at my friend's house, um, social distancing, of course. <laughs> and um, we basically were, are doing a secret project that I'm going to tell you about uh, soon. 
Um, not, oh, not today. that's exciting. But in a couple weeks, I can tell you. Well, stay tuned um, for that, people. <laughs> stay tuned. Um, but it's all about hope and giving hope back to everybody during this pandemic. And then I have like some teachers and things from from past, either from way back in college or high school, um, that want me to do some master classes and and Zoom talkbacks and things like that. And I love stuff like that. I I did. I, I know we didn't uh, get get to this in the talk in the. I'm talking so much, by the way, and I'm really sorry. I'm talking so much, guys. Like, no, you're so. Funny. I just have so much to say. <laughs> yeah. There's anyway, actually another question. Yes. Um, somebody asked, do you have any advice for performers who want to end audition for Cirque? Yes. So um, the first thing is that I feel like you really, it's different. Um, like in the Broadway musical theater world, like you, you show up to auditions in person, you do all this stuff. And there's a lot of, a lot of people think, oh, if I send in my headshot and, re and it's true. If you send in your headshot and resume to a casting director in New York, they say they look at it, and they might look at it. I'm not saying they don't. <laughs> but I'm just saying, in New York, it really is about getting in front of them. Um, with Cirque, they tr because it's such an international company, and they are shopping for people all over the world, they truly, truly, truly are waiting for you to submit your material. I'm serious. They are seriously, I think, I think somebody, I think somebody told me they, had, they got a notification when they get new material. So if that's true, you should, awesome. treat it, you should treat it like it's true. So submit your material. Submit your material. Be yourself. Be charming. Know about the company. Like, prepare a variety of materials. So this, like, like I said earlier, I sang Wicked, Defying Gravity, belting my face off, and I sang, like, an opera aria or something. I showed different, different styles because that's, Cirque is all about um, versatility and being, being flexible and and you're way more useful to them if you can do everything. So um, show as much variety as possible in your audition. And, and if you do get in that database, this is really important. Bug them every now and then. So every three or four months, send an email. Hey, blah, 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 your casting contact. Whoever contacts you on email, that's your person. Hey, mm. what's up, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing this. This is what I'm working on. I just want to let you know I'm available and interested in this, this, this. Keep me in mind. That's so important. It's so important to stay on top of it. And I'm, I've always been pretty good about kind of bugging people, like kind of staying yeah. in touch, you know, not in an annoying way, yeah. Yeah. but just like in a professional, hey, this is what I'm doing. Keep me in mind kind of way. I mean, you say network is so important that if somebody were to reach out to me and wanted to get in contact with you, would you want me to, would you be okay if I did that? If I totally gave you guys okay? Awesome. Yeah, okay. that's totally fine. Great. I really, Actually, Mackenzie, that's, yeah, oh, go ahead. Go, go, go for it. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I am one of those people that I really, really get a lot of um, pleasure and I really, it really like fills me up to help. Like, I really, I really love helping people and connecting people. And if I think, if I think introducing you to this person will help you and you'll, you'll be an asset for that person, then I want to help you. I'm not one of those performers that's like, well, little whippersnapper, why don't you just, you know, you, you do your own path, work it out yourself. You know, I'm just not yeah. one of those people. And I, I never liked those people when I was little and, I, and I'm never going to be like that. I'm always going to be helpful to anybody who needs help. Well, that's awesome, Mackenzie. You gave such good advice, and we're actually coming to an end because Instagram's probably we're only allowed a certain amount of time. So no worries. <laughs> and that was fantastic. And I hope that people were writing things down because what you said was so enlightening. And I really hope that you help a lot of people. And this was so fantastic. I hope so too. This thank was you. super fun. Thank, thank you, you so so thank much you. for joining, and thank you everybody for watching. Um, stay in contact. Stay tuned for my next um, live. And Mackenzie, thank you so much. She was fantastic. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate and, it. <laughs> Everyone have a good evening. Thank you so All much right. for tuning in. Mackenzie, you were fantastic. Thank All you. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye, everyone.